A good DM should always give players a way to completely screw over the adventure? <laughs> what? According to a recent poll, you really like videos with advice. So recently, I said, Okay, what's the worst D&T advice you've ever received as a player or DM? Genuinely curious, but I might use these for a video. Because I think a great way to learn is just to make mistakes and learn from them, so why don't we just listen to a bunch of bad takes from other people to learn faster? And it turns out you folks had some wonderfully bad D&D takes, so here's that video. But I'm gonna start with Twitter, because I'm really bad at Twitter, so there's only like five replies to my post. <clears throat> Dark vision is basically night vision. Don't pick a race that doesn't have it. Yeah, dark vision really isn't as popular as most people think it is, so you don't really need it too much. But overall, like so many races have dark vision that it's probably really hard to pick a race without dark vision, and yeah, no one should really tell you how to make your character. Bad advice. Improvising is just fine. The party will ruin your plans anyway. Also, just plan for every possibility. Yeah, of course you should try to prep. Just trying to improvise is not going to be useful, especially for new DMs who don't have the experience to call upon mid-game and just make stuff up out of thin air. Oh, here we go. An old take. Female characters should have a penalty to strength because it's more realistic. <laughs> this is something I was really disappointed and like annoyed to see in the 1E D&D books that like the female, like it was the only stat that had a difference in the mins and maxes between male and female characters. Like Gary, you made that table twice as complicated as it needed to be just to be a little sexist. Like, come on. Oh, strangely, I haven't had any terrible advice. Question mark. <laughs> Great on you, David. People insisting that letting a PC die in a random encounter or anything not epically plot related is the most boring, lazy, shitty, unimaginative GM mode. Yeah, if you're gonna use random encounters enough, eventually a character is gonna die during one, especially depending on how random they are. This one's great. Sometimes you need to teach the players a lesson by either bullying them or outright killing one of them. Yeah, and I have to point out, Killing your players, definitely bad advice. Killing the characters to teach them a lesson, also still terrible advice. And that's Twitter, pretty tame compared to the more unhinged comments we might see in the vast pool of YouTube comments that showed up on that post. But before we jump in, this silly video is sponsored so graciously by Describe, an online library of rich, descriptive text for you to easily search and plug right into your game when you want to wow your players with a bit of cinematic flavor. Describe has a bunch of free places, monsters, spells, and even some cool interactive maps that you should totally check out. But if you sign up, you can save 10% with the promo code BOB. Go do that. Link below. Oh boy. There's like 300 comments here, so I'm scrolling for some reason way to the bottom. I think it'll be fun to start with perhaps the least popular worst advice. Here we go. Play a champion fighter as a noob. Yeah, uh, actually, I think that's not bad advice. Again, no one should tell you what character to play, but I would definitely suggest not being a spellcaster as a noob. I, I don't think that's so bad. Anything from your videos. Touche. Quote, Play Pathfinder. Yes, people tell me this every time I make a video about homebrew. Apparently, if you want to change up 5e at all, you should just play Pathfinder. I don't know about that. Is Pathfinder just like a game made of homebrew? Use critical fumble rules. I also kind of like critical fumbles. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if I'd call that bad advice either, personally. Because yeah, you don't always want the dice to give you some goofy comedic result, but... Critical fumbles don't have to be funny. They can be a consequence for like equipment breaking and stuff. Like I'm into that possibility, even though a lot of people aren't. Dwarf Daddy says, people saying to use another system when I want to run a specific sort of campaign or setting. If I could use another system, I would. Yeah, I agree with that too. If you just know how to play 5e, you're gonna wanna just twist that if you can, instead of learning an entire new game. So definitely, I, I agree, bad advice. That D&D 5e can be used with any genre. <laughs> that is the exact opposite of the piece of bad advice we just read. Uh, never split the party. 
That's just boring storytelling. Yeah, I totally agree. Splitting the party is one of the most fun things you can do in D&D. Always leads, almost always leads to, to a dramatic situation. I guess if they're just like shopping or something, not necessarily. <laughs> you only need one set of dice. You don't even need one set of dice, actually. When I first played D&D for probably the first several months, uh, only the DM provided dice. We all just like used his. But honestly, it's just a fun part of the hobby, collecting dice. They're like such a cool part of the game. It just physically, tangibly having that cool, weird thing that is so unique to D&D and other RPGs. Get a lot of dice. Maybe check out our other sometimes sponsor only crits. Link down there further in the description. It's what your character would do. I go so back and forth with this line. Ultimately, the entire game is us saying it's what my character would do. Always assume your PCs are going to min-max. Honestly, this is not fun at all and is not how a lot of people play. Yeah, uh, people aren't always going to min-max. Most of the, I mean, you have to know your players. And if you have new ones who don't know the rules, they're not going to min-max. <laughs> a player once told me, ugh, don't use pop culture references, to which are applied across the table, don't tell me how to play D&D. Yeah, you know what? That's kind of a, an appropriate response. Again, as I already said a few times in this video, no one should really tell you how to play. That's why I'm letting these people sort of counterintuitively tell you how to not play D&D as a lesson. Um, but yeah, as to using pop culture references or not, I could see it totally breaking immersion depending on the reference. Uh, so it really just depends on the tone of your game. I think a lot of the times it's, it's fun to have a fourth wall break every now and then. Older versions are bad. Uh, bad's a pretty broad term, you know, as we just said, there's totally like some sexism in 1E at, among surely some other bad things. <laughs> but uh, overall, I think it's a good game. We wouldn't be playing this today if it wasn't amazing in many other ways. A DM that doesn't let their player do everything is a bad DM. Wow. Yeah, and you know what? I resonate with this one because I really went through a phase of, I feel like also telling people you should never say no. I don't know if I ever said that in a video. Hopefully I didn't. That kind of weird like improv comedy advice of like, ah, yes and all the time doesn't actually work for D&D. Don't do that. Oh, spicy take. By fifth edition. <laughs> Players only care about the battles and not the story. I mean, some do. <laughs> An old DM of mine told me making a backstory for your character was a waste of time and just made the DM's life harder. Boom! That might be the worst advice in this video. Uh, making a backstory, again, you know, a reasonable backstory, like a page, a paragraph, can help the DM so much because it gives them something to create a story about. Make a backstory. Just change your monster HP if they're beating you. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you can change the monster HP though. Uh, like, that's not bad, but not just if they're beating you because you should kind of want the players to succeed. TPK is punishment. That's bad. Hot take, advice that boosts character HP like Matt Mercer's house rolling of re-rolling ones for HP. But I like how they tagged this. I like fewer hit points and a more lethal game. Boom, that's fun for you, do it. Don't worry, dragons are too dumb to hold grudges. <laughs> that's That must be bad advice to a player because yeah, your dragons should always hold grudges. <laughs> My cat is licking the bed right now. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> the worst advice I got was that party NPCs would be okay. They can provide motivations and information to the party. For me, they became DMPCs. Yeah, ooh. Party NPCs, it's a slippery slope if you're going to have NPCs who are like in the game with the party for a while. Here we go. Uh, the DM's role is to make sure the players have fun. I think that is their role. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what um you're supposed to have fun too, but if your players aren't having fun, I think you're doing it wrong. When I first went to a game shop five years ago, I was told if I wanted to play or run D and better have the DMG rules memorized and cannot open a book during play. That's so dumb. <laughs> it was a 3.5e game, and my barbarian was figuring out puzzles before the rest of the party. 11 intelligence, and I was told just because you know doesn't mean your character knows. Puzzles are a weird gray area for metagaming. Honestly, if the party wasn't going to progress and your character who has a lower intelligence was getting them through, that should be okay. We should want the party to proceed through the adventure. 
as a DM, if your players aren't 100% paying attention to the game 100% of the time, kill their character. And this literally says, keep killing them until they get the message. Yeah, don't do that. You shouldn't have to justify anything as long as it's fun. Yeah, that's where the rule of cool goes bad. I once watched a vid where it was suggested if a player interrupted the DM's description to announce they were attacking, that player should be given a free round before initiative is rolled. I think this person is cleverly <laughs> talking about my old initiative video where many people misinterpreted uh, something I said as like they should be interrupting the DM. Like, no. No, guys. Worst D&D advice is anything that contains never, always, or must. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. A D&D channel that shall remain nameless encourage players to leave their significant other if they did not also play D&D. I really want to know what channel they're talking about. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't have to worry about that because Grace World Destroyer loves D&D just as much as I do, if not more. That's not how that's supposed to be played. You're cheating. Not a rules thing, just a former DM who didn't like me changing the behavior of certain monsters. Wow, yeah. So a player told their DM they're running monsters wrong. That's ridiculous. That is, that's bad. As a player, I had a DM tell me that I built my character wrong. <laughs> Let's switch from Savage Worlds to D&D. It's so much easier. Yeah, I really want to make a video about this. It's more simple than older editions of D&D. Totally. But it is not a simple game. Like, there are way easier things that you could play than D&D. A good DM should always give players a way to completely screw over the adventure? <laughs> what? No. The players will just come up with a way to screw over the adventure. Don't, don't give them that. A DM went off on me when I tried explaining to a new player why playing a wizard for a one-shot might be a bit overwhelming. I was right. The guy was lost and frustrated and bored. Yeah. I mean, again... I don't recommend a spellcaster for a new player, but if that's what they want to do, it's fine. Or really, like, honestly, the DM and other players, you could have helped them with that character a little bit instead of, like, letting them become lost and frustrated and bored. You are competing against other players slash the DM. Rules matter more than fun. <laughs> Rules matter more than fun? Get out of here. <laughs> if the players succeed with a plan to avoid an encounter, always bring the encounter to them. Oh, oh, I hate that. Only move the encounter in front of them if you had nothing prepared where they were going. If they're going to avoid stuff, you know, that's clever. Reward them. If you don't like something, just leave without saying anything. <laughs> Could you imagine someone just like getting up from the table and leaving their D&D &D group because they didn't like something without, without a word? Oh my gosh. When my party was off doing their own thing instead of the campaign, I wanted ideas to steer them back to the party and was told, just railroad them back. <laughs> Maybe even literally, like Magic Train picks them up. <laughs> yeah, that's dumb. Somebody once told me. <laughs> Don't show how much XP, HP the characters or the players have because it's meta. That would be crazy if they didn't know how much HP they had. Wow. I might try that one time, actually, though. <laughs> you don't need to know their characters to run the game. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I've had people play Artificers knowing very little about the Artificer myself, and it worked out fine. But you should try to learn their characters as best as you can, so you can really challenge them in appropriate ways, and especially learn about their backstory so you can incorporate it into the campaign. Punish your... This can't be a quote, but they have it in quotes. Punish your players for being creative. If they find a creative way out of a situation or encounter that you weren't expecting, just shut it down and make sure they never try anything like that again. Ugh. If the DM doesn't let you do something, pester them until they break and let you have your way or find a more open-minded DM. That is frightening. <laughs> Whoever said that is definitely a person who has not really played D&D. Ooh. This take is very meta. I gotta say that I don't think much of the advice itself is bad. Just give it to the wrong person at the wrong time. D&D is kind of an art, so no rule can truly apply to all situations. How wise of you, Chad Ridjord. And then it looks like the top ones are just like the kill their characters and never say no. So if you like this, uh, definitely like that video. Maybe join Patreon because it's super helpful for me. And keep building.